Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have back with us Bob Chitrathorn, who's the co-founder of Simplified Wealth Management. Bob, welcome back to the program. Hey, Mike, thanks for having me again. You are welcome. And I want to continue building on what we talked about before, because it's just so neat to hear kind of like your origin story, your, you know, where you are today versus where you started off. So kind of give us a little bit of a a fresh insight on how your upbringing helped frame your formative years into what uh, you grew from uh, today. Well, yeah, Mike, you know, as we spoke last time, um, you know, we talked more of the younger years and uh, the adversity and obstacles um, that, you know, not just myself, but individuals face. And so now, you know, talking a little bit fast forward to say, you know, high school and college, you know, back in high school, I guess, you know, I was a little bit different in the sense that, you know, some of the people I hung out with, you know, you might consider hoodlins, right? They're not by any means. They're some of my best friends still to this day and we do great. But, you know, when you're in high school, if you had to classify classify different cliques or cliche, you'd be like, hey, you know, there's kind of the, the sports guys, there's some kind of the nerds, there's the, the skaters and the bad boys and, you know, whatnot and what have you. And I guess, you know, the clique I originally ran with at first, uh, people might look sideways at, right? And yeah. I understood this and I noticed that. But internally, it made me feel like that doesn't seem fair. Like, you don't even know me. You don't know who Bob is, right? I mean, I'm still trying to figure out who Bob is when I'm in high school, yeah. right? So how are you able to say, hey, I'm going to throw you in this cliche? So I, I had to make an internal shift. Um, and, you know, that kind of led to my, uh, literally my entrepreneurial journey because it taught me a lot. You know, it's interesting that you said, internal shift and you said note that you noticed i feel like a lot of people no matter what click you know whether it's the bad boys or the jocks or the whatever whatever because we all are in something we all kind of birds of a feather flock together we all are in that but i find it found it interesting that you noticed it and you had kind of like an internal dissonance you just like i don't know that i like this, or I, I think I might want to shift out of that. So when you decided, you know what, maybe I want to be seen as, or identify with a different group. What were some of the steps that you took? Because number one, some of your, um, some people that are in that situation never even notice that they just keep their head down and go, I am what I am. But you noticed you wanted a little bit of a change, not that one is worse than the other or better than the other, but you wanted a little bit of a change. What was that for you? Yeah, for me, like the internal shift, it was, Mike, it was like, why do I have to be one or the other, right? Because I looked at myself, you know, I studied hard, I got great grades. So literally, if I had dressed a certain way or acted a certain way, I would have been labeled, you know, in the nerd group, right? Yeah. Um, I also played sports, you know, I played football, I played volleyball, um, you know, I was on the varsity team for those things, I played tennis. So then I could also be classified as a jock if you only looked at me in one certain way or you know i like skateboarding snowboarding you know i had a mohawk spiky hair you know earrings chain wallets you know then you can classify me as a skater if you wanted to or a punk rocker right and i was thinking to myself like this doesn't make any sense that's just going to limit the people i meet myself right so i decided that hey i know that i'm not just one of these I am all of them. And I want to figure out what I am all about as much as I can, as you could in high school. And so I made an effort. I purposely made an effort. I was already hanging out with all my friends who were pretty much in the skater crowd, right? I didn't have to do much effort there because that was appearance. And again, we all know appearance is kind of the first thing that kind of clicks people together, especially in high school. Okay. So I had to go out and say, Hey, you know what? How am I going to make friends with these smart people? that would be classified as nerds. So I just decided to start talking to them and start asking them questions about what we were studying. Yeah. And then they realized that I knew what I was talking about. So I naturally just became part of that group somehow. And then I, you know, again, tried out for sports and became friends with them. Um, so I was in all these different cliques, if you will. And it's really awkward um, at first because I felt myself acting the clique 
while I was yeah. with the click. You know what I mean? And I was like, this is, this is weird. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's part of me, but it's not fully me. So I decided, you know, every, I had all these different friends and different clicks and they were all really cool, great people. So I decided to just kind of start kind of weird. I started throwing parties. Um, I was actually pretty, pretty known for throwing a lot of parties in high school, actually, even from other schools. Um, but I would just start inviting all my friends from the different cliques. And it was cool that over time, we all started realizing that we all or were similar people once we got to know each other. And so wow. that friendship, it, it was kind of cool because you started seeing like some jocks, if you will. And again, every term I use is just a cliche. It's a judgmental yeah. from back in the day, right? But you started seeing jocks and nerds and geeks and skaters hanging out or showing up to the same party together because we were the all lines were friends. starting to blur because of Bob. <laughs> I, I guess I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I, I, I loved it. Cause I was like, Hey, now I can be myself. You know, when yeah. I go on a varsity football trip, right. I can take my, you know, my jerseys and all of that good stuff that you have to take, but then I can dress the way I want to, which is, was kind of skaterish. Right. And, yeah. It, it, no one would care. I wouldn't feel judged anymore because everything was kind of like, okay, none of that matters as much. Um, and you know, and it wasn't just the kids and my colleagues, but I mean, I saw that with teachers too. I mean, imagine someone in high school with a mohawk, um, you know, piercings and Shane Wall. You're just naturally going to look at that person if you don't know anything different. Not to mention I went to a private school, and um, you'll make assumptions. You, you, you're going to make assumptions. Right. And I get that. And so having so many assumptions made of me growing up was probably one of the best things that could have ever happened to me because it broke my assumptions that I would normally make on other people. It made me take a deeper look. Right. And, you know, when these teachers started realizing, Hey, you know, Bob's getting 4.0s, uh, you know, we can't really, we can't really judge him too much on his clothes. Yeah. Because yeah. we want what, what it works for him. Education system. Yeah, the whole education system is for people to learn, get good grades, so they can uh, pursue better things in life and make the world a better place. So I think at that point, you know, teachers were just like, "Well, I guess we're forced to accept Bob for the way he is because he's in four point oh's, right?" Yeah. And I thought that was pretty cool because once they were quote unquote forced to, which is a bad word, but you know, they weren't forced to. But like, what, what else could they do? Right. I'm doing my it came to their realization. So, yes. Yes. And once they were able to realize that, I, I think it just. I hope it helped them relax for any other future, you know, type of stereotypes coming through uh, the doors yeah. years to come. Right. Because it happens all the time. Yes. That's a huge, it's such a huge point. It reminds me of the old cliche story that we hear about the old blind guys that are touching an elephant and they uh, you know, so oh, this is a wall because that guy was touching the side of the elephant and the other guy's like, no, it's a big hose because they were touching the trunk and no, it's a, and everyone was right. But in reality, if you step back and look at it, it's like, oh no, they're all, you know, wrong because they are, you know, touching an elephant. So that's exactly what you described. I think it's a really neat thing to realize that ripple effect that when you started making some of those decisions and steps forward, it started impacting others in a positive way. That's just, that's the ultimate um, positive mental attitude, taking a step forward, being the change you wanted to see made. And then you saw people rallying around that. I think that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I I love the elephant uh, analogy there, Mike, because you know, it's when you're up close, you have tunnel vision. Right. And we can only see so much. So we can only perceive so much and we can only see so much. But as you step back, right. And you start looking, I mean, obviously if you can see, right. You're like, Hey, I see a full elephant or you step back. Hey, we're not just at an elephant place. We're at a zoo. Cause now you see lions yeah. and tigers. Right. So it, it, it's being able to take a step back and look at the big picture and understanding and realizing that if you are looking so focused and so narrow, you're going to have tunnel vision that plain and simple, yep. right? I mean, physically, I mean, you walk through the window and all of a sudden, all you see is a window. And if you don't move for 10 hours, you're going to think you're just right in front of a window for getting your inside of a room, right? That has a door, right? You got to take that step back. You got to see the big picture so that you can get more perspective 
And somehow I learned that really young and early on in life. I have no idea how it may have been how I grew up from, you know, elementary school or part of college. I, but I got lucky. And it is a ripple effect because in my, in my journey as an entrepreneur, if you will, I think those, those lessons that I learned also come into my entrepreneurial life because it's, again, Bob, sometimes take a step back. What are you trying to get accomplished? What is the main thing you want to do? Someone can say, hey, Bob, you want to help people be better at finances. You want to make sure people don't argue about money um, and, you know, things like that. But the big picture is, and I know this sounds generic, cliche, whatever it is, but the big picture to me, Mike, is I believe in that ripple effect. I believe that we all inherently are humans and are the same, right? As long as we share the same values and uh, kind of want the same things, you know, many other things don't matter. Appearances don't matter. You know, what you drive doesn't matter. Things of that nature yeah. just don't matter anymore when you take that big picture, big uh, perspective. And what I really want to do, and I've done, wanted this for a long time, and you can ask my friends in high school, and they'll say the same thing. What's the one thing Bob always talked about? And it was changing the world. I've Nate. always wanted to change the world. I've always wanted to make it better. By paying it forward and being the change that you want to see done. Yes. Yes. I mean, I, I, yeah. And you know, one of the things I love doing, and I couldn't do this when I was younger, I did in, in smaller, um, what's the word I'm looking for. And, you know, a smaller scale, obviously in high school and college. Uh, but you know, one of the things I love doing now is I love sometimes walking through the mall. Let me rephrase that. I hate going to the mall. I hate walking yeah. through the mall. <laughs> when right. I find myself, right. when I find myself in the mall, what I do try to do is take that bigger picture that perspective okay i hate the mall i hate walking through the mall what can i do to make this fun and what can i do to change someone's life i take that perspective in and then i start looking you know i'll, I'll walk through macy's or whatever you know whatever store it is and i always purposely look and then if i see someone who i notice is buying clothes that is not for themselves right you know it could be a parent it could be an aunt it could be an uncle whatever it is I always like to go up to them. I like to cut in line, right? And I, I may have mentioned this to you before, but I like to cut in line, pay for whatever they have. Granted, I have to make sure I really look at what they're buying because I don't want, to, you know, hoping they're not spending like a thousand bucks, right? Yeah, so, you, know, you don't I mean, want to see reasonable. Gucci tags. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. But just, you know, just modest things. And so I'll cut in line, I'll pay for it. And then as I leave, one of the things I always say is, my name is Bob. Let's make our community stronger, make the world a better place, and it can all start with one action. Wow. That's kind of my go-to quote every time I do that, um, because I strongly believe it, because I've been doing that for years, right? Not just, you know, one year, two years. I'm, we're talking high school and college, just on a different scale, right? Yeah. And, you might have bought, bought some of the Big know, Mac. It, it, yep, yep, a Big Mac, uh, you know, a bean burrito from, you know, Baker's that cost a dollar, whatever it is. Yep. Um, but it's, I've always noticed two things when I've done that is no matter if they're in a good mood or a bad mood, they always seem appreciative. And there's a smile that comes from that. And yeah. that taught me that one action can change it. You know, they could have been having a bad day. They could go be all mad all day long and probably affect other people, make other people mad. Or maybe I just changed them. One thing, one action made them happy. And now they're going to be nice for the rest of the day. And do some great thing later on that day that has a ripple effect that changes the whole world for the better. And, you know, well, I, I and after that. you walked away from doing that, um, w w did you have a pit in your stomach? Did you trip? Did you have a horrible day? Did you have a frown? Was there a cloud over your head? Of course not. So the ripple effect goes both ways. You help change that person's day. You put a spring in your step because you see that and feel that. So I think that's a, a huge aha and a great tactical thing that people can implement in their own lives. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Another thing I learned by doing things like that, right. Cause I, I remember I mentioned there was two things. Um, one was, you know, they'll be happy. Um, but the number two is it makes me happy. And yeah. I realized that that sounds ex extremely selfish. Did I do it because I'm selfish? Did I do it because I wanted to make me happy? Well, the true answer is no, but it's one of those things that if you really think and try to learn about yourself, you have to question yourself, right? Yeah. So I spent a lot of time questioning like, okay, I, I want to do this. I want to see them smile. I want to help them. 
But the fact that it makes me feel so good as well, like, is there some sort of inner unconscious thing of why I'm doing it? And my answer today is I think we are all naturally selfish. I think that's just a part of nature. And so I've decided that, hey, if I believe that we are all naturally selfish, what can I do selfishly that makes the world a better place and other people happy? And so I'm still working on that. You know, I'm 44 years old now. Don't know if I'll ever have the answer to this. Um, but again, it's, you know, if, if I'm going to do something that makes me happy, how much better is it that it also makes someone else happy? hundred percent. You know, you mentioned something that made me think of another analogy we hear in business. Um, oh, B to B, B to C, you know, business to business, business to consumer. Um, and I feel like, um, it should be H to H, which is human to human, because we're we're treating people as humans. It doesn't matter are the consumer or business or all of these things. But what you just laid out there is, man, if I can brighten someone's day, uh, help them with something, maybe monetarily, or maybe it's let me help you, you know, uh, uh, carry this thing or open the door for somebody. It, it, it could be just something that you're noticing. And you know what that entails? It entails someone like us, you. Um, to get your nose out of your phone, to notice things and be aware of opportunities that are always around us. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, I love the fact that you mentioned H to H, human to human. Okay. One of the things that I know you have heard before, and I'm sure anybody listening to this has heard many of times, right? I don't know if anyone's really thought about it, but it burns my inner core. It really gets it. It, it just really burns me. And that saying is, it's only business. It's business. Yeah. What does that mean? To me, I was like, when you can say that, most people usually say, oh, it's only business. Usually it's in a situation where something didn't happen that helped both sides. Yeah. Right? It's so, I mean, it was almost a, a zero-sum game. Someone won, someone lost, and that's why they said it's only business. Right? Uh, to me, I think the best type of business is like you mentioned, HTH. It's always business. It's always personal. It's always you. Because why should my personal ethics be one way? And then all of a sudden in the business world, oh, it's, it's only business. Don't worry. I, you know, in my personal life, I wouldn't have done that to you. But since it's a business world, it's only business. That does not make sense to me at all. So, yeah. I mean, I definitely do not like that saying it's only business because it, business is personal. Personal is business. You are who you are. You shouldn't change who you are in the sense of, hey, your ethics or your values change because now you're at work as opposed to at home, right? And like, if you're going to be true to yourself, it really should carry forward um, more so into the business world, because I think most people would agree and say that, hey, if you had to say that you had two types of ethics, you had personal ethics and business ethics. Most people not that I agree with this, but I think most people would say, hey, you know, my personal ethics and values are, you know, better than my business ethics and values. Because a lot of times when it comes to business, people are thinking about one thing and one thing only, and that's improving business, improving money. I think that needs to change. I think your personal values and your personal ethics should be the same as your business values and your business ethics. And you should not be trying to improve income and money in business when you're in your business. You should be trying to improve human values. You'd be trying to improve those around you so that this way we can truly make the world a better place. We just have to care a little bit. 100%. You know, Bob, uh, hearing kind of your story and what you noticed and how you, tr um, you know, transferred some of your attentions to different groups and, and things. Um, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about key attributes that you feel that people need to notice and manage so that they can make some of these changes in their life currently, personally, as well as professionally? Yeah, I mean, key attributes, uh, we all have great attributes. We just got to find them, right? Some people yeah. have a hard time finding what, you know, one of the key attributes is. And it's, again, going back to the ripple effect, you find one key attribute, you're going to find another, and you're going to find another. So, you know, I had to give advice to people, hey, you know, some of the key things to pay attention to, to try to, you know, improve yourself um, personally and, you know, uh, professionally is who are you literally who yes. are you i mean it, it's a hard thing to answer but try to and i don't know if you'll ever be able to answer it because when i ask myself that all the time 
sometimes the same things come up. Sometimes new things come up that I haven't, you know, wrote down before. So I always say, Hey, you know what, if you really want to start paying attention and, you know, trying to find these attributes that could improve yourself professionally, personally, and improve the world. Again, I'm still learning myself. So, you know, take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, but I always say, who am I? And think about that. What do I want to do? And what do I want to change? Those are the three things I always think about. And then I try to make sure that they all somehow overlap, right? Because if you want to do one thing and how you're going to do it and who you are, they all should be intertwined somehow, right? Because again, that goes back to, I don't want to be that person who says ever, oh, I'm sorry, it's just business. That's, yep. that, 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 that whole saying disgusts me. Yeah. Well, what you just described there is the classic um, gap, G-A-P, gap. You want to see where you're at. You want to determine where you want to be. And then what's the gap and how am I going to get from point A to point B? And and I think all of that uh, requires us to be aware, take notice, have that desire, like Napoleon Hill teaches, have that burning desire to make that change to be better in whatever area, personal or professional. So if you see where you are, you notice where you want to be. And then you see, okay, now I've got this drive to make this change. It's not overnight because wherever you are, you didn't, it didn't get there overnight. And wherever you want to be, it's not going to be overnight to get there. So I think it's really important for people to realize what you just said there. That's amazing. Yeah. And I'll, I'll add to that. And, you know, this gets a little personal. I mentioned it, um, you know, last time a little bit, but you also have to really understand or try to find flaws or if someone points out a flaw, you know, don't get defensive and just kind of write it down and think about it. And one of my flaws that I've, I've had for years, didn't realize this till probably two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, um, or actually, let me take that back. I probably realized it about five years ago, um, six years ago, didn't do anything about it till a year and a half ago. Okay. And one of those flaws can also be conceived as, you know, a key attribute. And that's the fact that I have a type A personality, I'm always on the go. And I have, high amounts of anxiety. I like to get things done. When things are on my calendar, I do not want to procrastinate. I want to get them done. I want to get them all done. On the flip side, something that could be a good attribute of yourself could also be something that's holding you back. It could be something that's slowing you down more than you know. And what I'm talking about here is that anxiety that I had to get things done. I also had the anxiety of, oh my goodness, Mike, I got 45 things on my calendar. I know I can only get 22 things done. What am I going to do? Oh my goodness. I got three extra phone calls. I came in. That I didn't expect. Oh man, what am I going to do? Okay. I'm looking at the screen. This is stressing me out. Bob, just pick something just do it. You know, that anxiety, right? It, 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 it was just really high anxiety and it ended up wasting a lot of my time. And then I would worry about worrying. You know, I was stressed about yeah. stress. We all know that is idiotic, but that's what I was doing. And I knew that was mm. idiotic. But I didn't want to do anything about it. I was afraid to do something about it because I didn't know what to do about it, right? And it was, um, you know, a friend of mine said, hey, Bob, you might want to talk to somebody because you're really great at what you do. You're smart. You're intelligent. You get things done. But this is affecting your lifestyle, not just at work, but, you know, just at home because you're stressing about work at home because of the next day yeah. of all the things you have to do. And so I started talking to somebody and it was kind of weird. Uh, one of my friends said, Hey, you know, cause I told my friend about a year ago and she said, Hey, you know, that's something you might want to tell people because you know, there's always been a stigma against, you know, mental health. Right. Yeah. And we're hearing more and more about it nowadays, but I will tell you, I got prescribed uh, fluoxetine, which is a generic version of Prozac. Um, this is about a year and a year and a year and a half ago or so. Right. And I told the doctor, Oh my goodness, I do not want to take that. Yeah. Bob, why not? Because I pride myself on being a go-getter. I pride myself yeah. on getting things done. I pride myself on not being lazy. Right. Those are the things I pride myself on. And I feel like this medication is going to make me not care. And I'm going to be lazy and not even notice it. Doctor says, Bob, I understand how you feel. Let me tell you that is not the case. 
And, you know, we'll get you on a small dose to start. What do you think about that? I said, well, you know, if it's going to help me, I mean, stressing about stress was just one of the hardest things yep. to do. It, it was it, anybody who does it understands it. It, it. Your heart starts beating fast. Your mind goes 27 ways sideways. Um, and, you know, the analogy the doctor gave me was, you know, it's not that you can't ever not take Phloxetine or Prozac. But it's kind of like your car. If your car has, you know, a condition where, you know, you need to consistently wash it so it's not dirty, what do you do? You keep washing it so it's not yeah. dirty, right? Yeah, if you just have, a little maintenance. If you're, yeah, if, if you have diabetes, you do things so that you can keep living, yeah. right? And so she said, Anxiety is nothing different. You just have to understand that that's what you have. So you have to do things so that you can live the best way you can live. Or you don't have to take the medication, Bob. And you can, you can still function the way you are, yeah. but don't, but realize you're going to have all that stress and that all the good stuff you're going to have still, but then you're going to have all that crazy stress and anxiety that you're talking to me about, Bob, that just drives you nuts and you don't understand why you do it. You don't get it. You know it's wrong, but yet you do it anyway. And you worry about it. I said, so oh, what was man, the okay. what was the result? The result was um, I got on fluoxetine. I've been taking it, and honestly, the craziest thing is, I'll see my list have fifty things on it. I'm more focused now. You're I like, okay, let's knock done. out one at a time. Yeah. Yep, knock it out. Done, done, done. <laughs> and it's the same later. list okay, that you, know you had before. It's, it's just now your perspective has changed and you can handle the list going step at a time. Whereas before it, it, you just needed that little bit of a smoothing out. Exactly. It, it's like, it, it's like trying to get uh, stuff done when you can't breathe. Right. But if you take, yeah. take a step back and you breathe and you can focus and that's, that's what it is. And you know, I'm, am I embarrassed talking about it? I am. But the one reason I do want to talk about it is because of the fact that one of my friends told me, she said, Hey, you know what? These are the things that people need to hear more about, you know, the good and the bad, right? And how this has helped, you know, like my attribute that was really good also had a downfall, which was that anxiety. But, you know, people just need to get their mental health straight. And again, it's embarrassing to talk about, but uh, since I've been on uh, Flox team, my life has completely changed in the sense that, you know, I, I don't have this, what my wife used to call the heart attack feeling every day. Like I, yeah. like I would just got to have a heart attack because at the end of the day, they're just too much. I don't have that anymore. I work. And if I want to work till five 30, I work till five 30, six 30, six 30. When I'm done, I just move everything and that's it. I deal with it tomorrow. And then I'll get to the point where I'm like, Hey, you know what? I'm tired of seeing the same thing. Now I need to move things two weeks ahead, uh, you know, a week ahead, just so that I can keep it at the 30 task a day list, or whatever it is, you know, then it's fine. It, it, it makes a big difference. And, out of everything that I talked about, that's probably one of the biggest messages I want to get out there is, hey, if there's something that's not working, there are things that we can do yeah. to fix it. Awesome. So now let's uh, wrap up here, Bob, and uh, shift into all of these lessons you've learned and all of these wonderful attributes that we've talked about. How is that impacting your work with your clients um, currently in your business professionally? Let me just start out by saying I love what I do. I love it so much that like it's it's not work to me, right? Again, where people say it's just business to me, my business is my life, my life is my business, it's all intertwined, it, it's all part of the vacations, it's all part of the hard work, it's all part of a, helping my clients, um, you know, really, really caring about my clients and going that extra mile because they are my friends, my family. And I want them to be successful. I want them to learn things that they don't know that can make a huge difference in their lives. Because again, it all goes back to that ripple effect. And so many mm -hmm. people I talk to that aren't even clients of mine, I will help them get a durable power of attorney for free because I believe everybody needs one. Do I have any compensation on that? No. Does it take a little of my time? Yes. But at the end of the day, it's what they need. It's what's good for them, if nothing else. And it does make the world a better place. So I believe in those things. And so because of the things I've learned and that I apply those beliefs into my practice and my business, I feel, yes, I spend a lot more time than most people on things that don't compensate. But I feel like that all comes back because people see 
that I'm literally, you know, this is who I am. There's not, you know, it's not a fake, Hey, let me do this so I can eventually do this for you. I, I, Hey, take this for free. If you need more help, come to me. I love helping people. And so I think all my attributes and life lessons have kind of led to, you know, me being transparent and upfront in uh, financial planning and helping my clients and going the extra mile and, you know, literally doing things that most advisors won't do because it takes more time and it does take more time. I work 50 to 60 hours a week, but I don't complain about it because I love it. It's more of the paying it forward, giving value, serving, being that servant leader, giving results in advance. And then, oh yeah, I, I can help you with your you know, retirement or your financial questions. So I think that that is such a flipping the, the script on, that people are not used to because normally they're used to people pressuring them into doing something and you're teaching, educating, coming alongside them, being their friend and treating them like a human. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And my practice, my business, it, and my hobby helping people. They're all intertwined to one. That's why I don't mind spending so many hours doing it because I I can't say, Hey, the 60 hours I spent working, right. Anyone would classify as work. Was it really 50 hours of work and 10 hours just helping people because I like it? Yeah. I I don't know. I don't, I don't keep track that detailed, but again, to me, it's all kind of blends together. And that's why I, you know, I, I feel like I have a deeper passion than most and why that is, I don't know, but that's just how I feel. Well, Bob, it's just been such a pleasure talking with you here again and learning more of your methodologies and and way that you approach business and your personal relationships. So thank you so much. What's the best way people can reach out and connect with you? Well, yeah, the best way you can always find me. I mean, I have, you can search Bob Chichelthorne, you'll find my Facebook or my LinkedIn, but the easiest way is my website, planwithbob.com. Again, that's plan. P L A N with W I T H Bob B O B dot com and all my information's there. And again, you know, if someone just has a financial question and you know not looking for financial advisors, that's okay. Reach out to me. Anything that has to deal with a dollar sign, I probably have some sort of resource or value I can share with you. Um, I have applications I like to share for free that I've already paid for that have uh, financial modules. It'll give you a grade report on how you compare to your peers based on your age range and what you're doing and things of that nature. Um, I got lots of free resources, so don't hesitate. Reach out to me. Bob, well, thank you so much for coming back on. It's been a real pleasure talking with you. Thanks, Mike. Have a great day. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.